All right, well, it's official. Miami has moved on and fired Dan Enos. We're going to talk about this. Dan Enos is no longer the offensive coordinator or the quarterback coach for the Miami Hurricanes. Before we dive into this, guys, make sure you follow your boy on all my social media. That's where I get my troll on. That's where I do Q&As and things of that nature. So follow me on Twitter and on Instagram. So, guys, this is something that a lot of people are happy about. The fan base is happy about. People that cover Miami, um, they're happy about that. Dan Enos this morning was officially fired uh, from the Miami Hurricanes. Now, this is very interesting. This is coming off of a uh, shutout to Louisiana Tech uh, office yesterday. That performance was one of the worst offensive performances <clears throat> that I've ever seen in my life. Um, no points, punts left and right, no playing three different quarterbacks, no type of running game, no type of balance. Uh, to me, it felt like this team wasn't prepared at all. And Somebody had to pay the price. Before this game, it, it was announced by Tim Reynolds that Dan Enos was going to be fired after the game. People told me that, hey, Manny's going to fire Dan Enos. I didn't believe it because I said, it's taking too long. You know, you look at it now, a lot of teams already have who they wanted as their offensive coordinator, and now Miami's going to be behind the eight ball. Why? This isn't. This offense didn't just get bad. It's been bad all year. One of the worst teams on third down, uh, ranked in the hundreds in rushing, allowed uh, were 128th um, in sacks allowed, uh, gave up 10 sacks against Florida, gave up sacks all year. This is one of the worst offenses, and I do not say this with recency bias, but this is literally one of the worst offenses I've seen when you look at from game for a full season sample and yesterday was just the icing on the cake so my so my question is why wasn't dan enos fired earlier guys if you thought dan enos should have been fired after you know the eighth ninth game of the season then let me know make sure you hit that like button to let me know you thought dan enos should have been fired but we're going to go over this season and kind of how things went we got to remember that nobody thought Dan Enos was coming to Miami. When Manny Diaz was hired, he said he wanted a cutting edge offense, an offense that struck fear in the heart of defenses. Nobody was scared of our uh, offense. Uh, a lot of people like FIU knew exactly what we were doing and when we were doing very predictable offense, an offense that was atrocious at times. And we didn't get that with Dan Enos. Dan Eno, Enos and Enos also said that he would be able to tailor this offense around his talent. I feel like he didn't do that. I feel like he was fitting circles into squares. You know, I look at situations like we got KJ Osborne running a jet sweep. Why would you run a jet sweep with KJ Osborne when you have somebody electric like a Jeff Thomas that we've seen do great things, running sweeps and things like that. Um, you know, running, running, um, reverses with the tight ends. Um, you know, there was times where we'd run, 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 and we'd be able to establish the run, and then we'd start passing. I never understood it. And then another reason that he was brought over here was to help the quarterback room. To me, as a whole, this was a terrible quarterback play type of year. Outside of Jaron Thorne for six touchdowns against Louisville, this team as a whole, the quarterback play, was horrible. It was horrible, and we tried to tell lies as a fan base. We tried to say, well, this or that, but bottom line is from start to finish, Dan Enos did not do what he was supposed to do. He was supposed to bring a cutting edge offense. He didn't. He was supposed to develop the quarterbacks. It seems like the quarterbacks in the quarterback room got worse, trying to change up their delivery and their mechanics and stuff. Things just got worse. So you go into the bowl game and people say, hey, Dan Edis was going to be fired. It was first reported by Tim Reynolds. This morning, he actually was fired. Now, a lot of people will, will give Enos credit because he did go and get Tyler Van Dyke. So when I asked the question, what took so long? A lot of people say, well, we had to make sure national, we had to, because of early signing day, we had to wait. 
I don't agree with that. One, it, we can't base our whole, our coaching staff off of one player like a Tyler Van Dyke. We got to think about the betterment of this team. And I feel like the betterment of this team was to fire Enos right after the season and get a head start on finding an offensive coordinator that can spread the ball around, that can be a balance. A lot of people are saying they want to spread offense. I would like a balanced offense that utilizes our talent. That is what I want. I wonder if Manny knows who he's going to get as the offensive coordinator. Maybe that's why it was okay for him to take the time that he did. A lot of people are throwing out names. David Yule seems to be a favorite. Uh, Larry Fedora is a name that gets brought up. Um, if you're asking me, NMD TV, who do you want the office of coordinator for the Miami Hurricanes to be? I would say Chip Long. He's young, 36 years old. He came from, uh, he was last last with Notre Dame. A couple years back, he was a Brawls Award finalist given, given to a um, top assistant. Uh, he, look what he did with Ian Book. We saw what Ian Book looked like after the Miami game. Well, the year after that, they go to a college football playoff. So I like this guy. And the thing I like about him is he's, he runs a balanced offense where you can run it, where you can throw it, but you still play at a high tempo and you, you still have creativity and things of that nature. That is just my opinion. Another thing is I want to say is a lot of people feel like Hiring uh, Dan Enos um, is going to be it. Like Dan, en once we fire Dan Enos, everything's going to be good. I don't think so, guys. I've made it known. I do not think Manny's the guy. And this is another situation where I disagree with Manny, him waiting this long to fire Dan Enos. Um, I don't think Manny's the guy. He was part of the last staff. He was part of the last problem. And he's part of this problem. And firing Enos is something to to say, okay, we're at least working to, to improve. But when it's all said and done, when you look at how things went, the way that we shuffled through quarterbacks, the way that this team didn't look prepared after bye weeks, the way that this team played down to competition, the culture of this team, uh, allowing players to miss practices, miss games, to do all this stuff, it just is not ran by a coach that preaches the way Manny preaches. So in end, Dan Enos is fired from the Miami Hurricanes. The question will be is who else will be fired and who will replace Dan Enos? I'm out. Peace. He's a small guy, low center of gravity. And if you don't come, you know, to take him down lower. It, it, it's looking bad right now for Utah. And right now, even if they come back, there's no way they're making the playoffs. Eh. If, if doing any of these guys any favors, and we're never going to get better if we keep on playing musical chairs. And the way it looks like it's going, it looks like we're going to keep on doing the same thing going into the spring, and it looks like the same thing might happen next season. So I just want the starting quarterback to be named so that starting quarterback can actually learn, grow, and develop instead of having a quarterback competition every week. And, I mean, it's not all his fault. I mean, the Kosey Perry, I think he's better than Jaron. Basically, at this point, you know I was going to bat for Jaron Williams, but really, I just go to bat for whoever's the starting quarterback. But, I mean, I think Nikosi should be the guy. But the thing with Nikosi is, like, the coaches, I don't know what it is. The coaches just never really believe in him. He doesn't really get a lot of chances. Like, if he makes a couple of mistakes, he automatically gets benched. And then Jaron Williams, man, I mean, Jaron Williams at times, he just looks inexperienced. But, I mean... I'm just really frustrated with the whole quarterback. Situation. I wonder. I wonder how good Nikosi would look if Manny Diaz came out and said Nikosi's our guy no matter what, like he yes. did with Jaren. I wonder how Nikosi. When that question needs to be asked, that I wonder if Nikosi knew 100 percent that no matter what I did tonight, I'm going to be the starting quarterback. How he would play. Yeah, and you damage you damage the man's confidence. I mean, the man's confidence has already been hit. Several times, although we don't see it. I mean, he's made an Instagram post. I don't know if you saw, but he had the selfie in the mirror and he was talking about um how he's just a young kid trying to live life, trying to be happy and things like that. So, I mean, it's obviously affecting him. Somebody put a somebody put a quote out and it said it. Somebody tweeted this. They said Tate Martell has uh, missed several games due to personal reasons. Jaron has missed practice. And he's threatened to transfer. Nikosi has stood strong from day one. 